kind of terrifying. You like food? Me? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Why other me? Just wondering. <laughs> Let me ask a better question. What would you do for one million dollars? Anything. Uh, easy. Probably suck. Dick. Would you have your mouth wired shut, forcing you to be on a liquid diet for an entire month in order to achieve enough money to buy you like 900 overly priced smartphones? Sure. Yeah, why not? I guess. Any long-term side effects? I don't know. Uh, trauma? Uh, maybe some more like flashbacks or something? Oh my god. Yeah. Okay, cool. Because yeah. you're doing all that. <laughs> Except you're not doing it for a million dollars. What? You're doing it because your jaw sucks, you're in pain all the time, and you have trouble chewing without lock jawing. Oh, oh yeah. That is terrible. Well, if you got like a phone or something. No. No, oh, also you're doing it for two months. I had my mouth wired shut for two months, and as one may That's tend to awesome. think when hearing about another individual getting their mouth wired shut, it uh... No. It sucked. <laughs> for context, yeah. I was born with what people in the medical industry oh. like to call a piece of crap. <laughs> my jaw was a bit crooked, and using it in any sort of way would cause me some sort of mild discomfort so or pain. Sad. Even in the most mundane ways. For example, doing simple tasks like eating, talking, yawning, blowing bubbles, you know, the everyday things. Oh, Definitely sad. didn't help in the almost self-confidence department either, because, uh, well, having a crooked jaw and also a body that needs to that, that needs to grow. I grew up with my jaw slowly developing outward. Nothing too crazy, but enough to make me, uh, not smile in any pictures for most of my life. Oh. No, no, no! Shut up! Shut up! None of that! No! Shut the fuck up! Not this time, motherfucker. But yeah, I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal. I was able to hide it relatively well, and for the most part, people either didn't notice or just didn't care. It really didn't start to affect me both mentally and physically up until three years ago. And I guess I had my last growth spurt or whatever. Things just got weird. Basically, my jaw would lock up, the muscles around it would be in pain all the time, and I wouldn't be able to say certain words without slurring, lisping, or pausing to let the gears turn in my head for that next word I wouldn't stumble on. What did I just say? Say. Sorry. Yeah, so I got nice. surgery. Everything's fine. Oh, and I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> All right. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> We've been taking food for granted our entire freaking lives. Okay, I know there's some of you peeps out there thinking, uh, Adam, I love food. I would never disrespect a thing that brings me eternal joy every couple hours. But hear me out. You know that one saying, you never know what you had until it was stripped away from you for two months? That's not how they're saying, God! Yeah, well, it's true. You see, after jaw surgery, you have to have your jaw wired shut for two months or so. They do this by using your braces, a rubber splint, some rubber bands, and then just, like, tie everything together and just... You also have to be put on a liquid diet for four to six months because bones are stupid and just be like that. Now, one of these alone would suck major poop, but put them together, and what do you got? bippity poppity. Oh, God! Please, have mercy! I yield! I yield! The first two weeks weren't that bad. I mean, things did suck because I was super swollen, literally couldn't speak or breathe, and was in a bit of pain, but it'll all be worth it in the end. We're a nice callback. Me? Things like communicating what I wanted, like chocolate milk, was the worst because I physically couldn't speak. I literally couldn't make noise to ask for even the simplest of things because of how tightly wired my jaw was. So, I had to use a pen and paper to write down my thoughts and needs, like chocolate milk, to make sure things were properly communicated. The good thing, too, was that I was in the hospital recovering for most of that time and was being taken care of by really competent and polite nurses who apparently couldn't read and never brought me my goddamn chocolate milk! But I, I was fine. It wasn't until week three when I began to panic. The day I was finally able to leave the hospital. For the entirety of those days, I had nothing to quote-unquote eat except for these things called boosted drinks. And I thought because I was living, it meant no more wires and no more freaking drinks. Found out I was hecka wrong when my doctor came in to let me know right before I was about to go that, Oh yeah, by the way, you might need to have your jaw like this for... Another six weeks. Broke. Doc, yes. you broke me. I went home that day in the biggest funk I have ever been in in my life. Take away Adam's food and I, I don't even know who I am anymore. Oh. After a couple days of sleeping and ready, things got uh, a bit weird. <laughs> Well, one day I was laying in bed just contemplating my very existence when my oh, brother okay. hit me up to let me know he was coming over to bring me more food. A couple minutes passed by and my brother finally shows up at my door with a big crate of those boosted drinks. So, I invite him into the house and we both begin walking towards my kitchen. As we were walking towards my kitchen, I noticed that he has another bag with him. I didn't think much of it for uh, that's probably, that's probably for until, uh... <laughs> 
Well, I did. <laughs> My mind immediately started racing and got curious as yes. fuck was in the back. It could literally be anything. Anything my heart, soul desires. New games, chalky milk, toothpaste that I needed because I ran out, another bag? What the frick was in that goddamn piece of earth destroying plastic? I had no. It was driving me mad all within the two seconds of seeing it. So, with the power of detectivism, I developed a question designed specifically to keep the question E in a mindset that would lead me directly to the answer I was looking for. <coughs> The hey, what's, what's that? that? <laughs> yeah, mom told me to bring you some soup. Oh, oh. it's tomato. I look down in pure awe. Oh, a spotlight flashes onto the plastic tin full of tomato soup, and a halo like theme song begins to play in the background. Yes. The camera pans back onto my face with a single tear on my eye, looking on the sink. Thank you. Finally, something different! Let me just give you a little perspective on how desperate I was to have something different. No, I, totally I was advised by my doctor to stray away from any foods that might be a little too hot to eat, temperature-wise, because it could mess with the healing process. Meaning, this tomato soup was cold. I also should probably mention that I, Adam, aka something else, hate tomato soup. Tomato soup is gross. And even with these major deterrents, I didn't care. I was ready to strip down Butt ass naked and just go ham on that tub of ice cold tomato soup. In a blink of an eye, I snatched the tub out of my brother's hand, threw it in front of me, and opened it right up. At this point, my mouth is sopping wet, drooling from the mere sight of food that wasn't just one of those stupid drinks I was stuck with. I grab my spoon, dig in, and I swear to God, I have never had something so goddamn good in my entire life. It was literally just tomato soup from a box, cold as hell, but it tasted as if Gordon Ramsay himself served it up with a bedtime story and a loving kiss. I was in heaven, but things quickly turned south when my brother decided that he was gonna have a little taste. You know how if a tiger gets food, it gets all stupid protective and ready to eat anyone who dares to try to snatch it from it? Well, he grabbed his spoon, went in for a dip, and as soon as his spoon touched the red goopy gelatinous mess that we call tomato, I grabbed his hand, stared at him intensely, oh, no. and said with a muffled voice, I WILL FUCKING EAT YOU! <laughs> I was gonna eat him. I was gonna eat my brother, with no regrets. He was testing it. I mean, of course I didn't. My mouth was wired shut. I was, uh, I was in a different headspace, okay? I think it was at that moment that I realized I might have a problem. So, to prevent these types of situations like potentially devouring another human being over cold tomato soup, I decided it was best to figure out ways to potentially cope. Interestingly enough, I found that the best way that I coped with this situation was by heading on to good old YouTube and uh, watching other people eat cold tomato soup. Okay. Why would you torture yourself like that? You know the term living vicariously? Yes. I get it. I get it now. I never understood what that truly meant, but I get it. You see, after not eating solid food for about a month and a half now, I found myself just binging YouTube videos of people going to places, buying food, and eating it. Why? Hell, why the freak not? I mean, some could say I was performing some form of torture upon myself, but I will argue to my grave that it honestly made me feel so much better throughout the rest of the way. I don't know why. There's probably some psychology to it, and I'm no expert, but when I would watch these food eating channels, I would feel so at ease. The planets would align, the cosmos would shine fluorescently, glimmering with its glory, and I would be at the center, just drinking boosted drinks. Happy boosted drinks. And watching these people eat food. <laughs> doesn't that, uh, doesn't that genre have, like, a silly name to it? Uh, mukbang or whatever? Yeah, Is that how their audiences are? <laughs> Starving people? Oh, God. Please, no. No. But lazy content. Anyways, I don't really know how to end this video. It was honestly just a lot of complaining, but I think that's kind of funny. Although I went through a bit of hell after getting my jaw surgery done, I want to reassure people who are going through the same thing as me that it's 100% worth it in the end run. Two for two. Nice one, me. I've never been more happy being able to smile and not be in pain all the time. I ended up getting the wires finally taken off, and, and now I'm on, I think at the time of writing this, month five? Question mark, question mark, question mark. So that was and I slowly recent. over time upgraded from liquids to mashed potatoes to pasta and now solid food. So here's a video of me eating my favorite thing in the world for the first time in months. Okay.
Enjoy. White rice, black beans, steak, oh, pico de gallo, hot sauce, oh, yes. lettuce, tomato, awesome. cheese, and guacamole, all wrapped in chua, overly sized tortilla that should be called from this day on. Yes. Uh, yes. I don't think I can <laughs> handle this right now. Later, hey, this awesome. Handle this right now, but uh, I love it. And uh, yes, I'm watching him eat a burrito. I'm eat the s*** out of this. There you go. Here it goes. <laughs> And after that, so I'm gonna have to go check out my car to see what's going on. <laughs> no way, what do you guys want from me to be honest? I it's not really a, so, be like an overly dramatic reaction. Uh, to eat. There are two dogs killing themselves. Stop it! This is mukbang. I'm mukbang. I'm really excited uh, right now. I'm not with all the surfing. Yeah, I don't know how people watch it. Ah! I wanted to tell this story in the video. Basically, I was, I was after Joss surgery, I had to take this like stuff called. Uh, it was like um, it was like Tylenol with codeine or something like that. After I took the codeine, I promised myself that I wouldn't tweet out anything because I didn't want to tweet out anything stupid <laughs> and uh, look like a fool. Before I was on the codeine, um, and before I promised myself not to tweet out anything stupid, I had tweeted out already that I had gotten jaw surgery. And around the same time, the there was this meme going around where um, a grape had gotten surgery. Oh, so yeah. everybody yeah. was connecting the two, saying that I was the grape and saying that, "Oh, Adam, look it, you're the grape. You had jaw, you had surgery." And it was a pretty, it was pretty funny. In my coding state mind, I was just looking at these tweets, <laughs> getting pissed off because I was like, "I'm not freaking grape. Who the frick are these people calling me a grape?" I took my I took my phone and I was like these mother, mother are gonna get it now and I ended up tweeting where's oh you have my phone but I tweeted out something along the lines of like I promised I myself that I wouldn't tweet while on medication medication being spelled horribly wrong <laughs> but I have to say this I am not a great and it, it's just uh, there were a couple of spellings I think in a apostrophe somewhere that shouldn't have been it was like clear that I was I was out of it. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, I just thought that was funny. <laughs> I got pissed off because people were calling me a great. And uh, clearly, I am a human boy. Borderline out. I'm, uh, I'm going to VidCon. Nice. Oh, nice. Gross. Nice. Uh, feature creator. Just whatever. Come say hi. I'm more than welcome. Okay. I'm more than one of those conditions. I want so anyways, not, don't forget to like that smash button. And... Uh, <clears throat> Okay, all right, so... Very hard, I just spent nine minutes of my life recording him eating a burrito. <laughs> the the food-watching oh, was, for me, one of the most amazing videos in it. All right, so... I'm